My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are on page number five. And we are in the process of solving problems dealing with the notion of basic multiplication. Now, as I remind you yesterday, and as I've been reminding you the first four days, in order for you to do well in this exam, particularly problems dealing with multiplication, in order for you to do these questions easily and efficiently, you must know your timetables. You must know your timetables. 1 through 12. And if you need some help with learning your timetables 1 through 12, watch this video, Basic Math, Day 1 through 12, right here. Basic Math, Day 1 through 12. And it will help you memorize your tables. You must know them. Let's do number 1. Let's get going. Let's do problem number. We have done up to problem number 6 yesterday. We're going to start with problem number 7. Problem number 7 says 582. 582 times times 325 as you can clearly see as you can clearly see if you were to sit there and do this problem out like a goody two shoe as we are supposed to do it in a traditional way in a conventional way in an orthodox academic way it will take too long in the exam you must know how to estimate you must know how to estimate how to locate the right answer quickly and efficiently Let's do this, shall we? We're, not, we're going to do this out towards the very end, just for learning purposes. Let's first do the estimation here. So it's 582, let's pretend it is 600. It is 600 times 325. That's what we're going to do. What are we going to do? We're going to pretend it's 600, and we're going to multiply it by 600. So here we go. So 325 times 6. Times 6. 6, 5, that's 30. That's 0. 33. 2, 6 at 12, 12 plus 3 is 15, that's 5, carry 1, 3, eight, 3 6 at 18, plus 1 is 19. Now we go back and take care of our zeros. We do not have 6, we have 600. We do not have 6, we have 600 here. This was 600, not 6. So we just take two zeros. I don't know why I put a comma there, that's not what I meant to do. Just stick uh, two zeros there, and the final answer is about 195,000. About 195,000. Now the question is, is that an overestimation or an underestimation? We were asked to multiply 582 by 325. We ended up multiplying 325 by 600. This is an overestimation. This is an overestimation. You must be, you must be fully aware of it. You must be fully cognizant of it. Estimation is fine and dandy, but you must know whether you're overestimating or underestimating. This is an overestimation because we, we're taking 600 of them. They we're supposed to take only 582 of them. This is an overestimation that tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be slightly less than this amount. That's how I'm showing with a negative sign on top. We're going to do all the work now. Now, in the event, in the event it turns out that when you look at the answer choices and there are more than one answer choices, slightly less than 195,000, which is not going to happen very often, but if it does happen, then you go back and do some additional refinement. And I'm going to show you how to do additional refinement at the end. But in most cases, you will get this will be enough to, for you to get, get, get away with it. This will be enough for you to be able to look at the right answer. You don't have to look, do all the work here. This, will, this, this, is, this is painful. Let's, let's get going, shall we? This is only for learning purposes. That's all it is. As far as the exam is concerned, this is it. We are looking for an answer that is slightly less than 195,000. 5 twos are 10, 0, carry 1. 8 fives are 40, plus 1 is 41. 1, carry 4. 5 fives are 25, 25 plus 4 is 29. Hold the unit digit because we are no longer dealing with the unit digit, we are dealing with the 10 digit. We are going to multiply it by 2. 2 twos are 4. 2 eights are 16. That's 6. Carry 1. Cross 4 out and put the 1 there to remind yourself that we are carrying 1. The 4 was from the previous round. And now we have to do 2 fives are 10 plus 1 is 11. You must know where you are. Now we hold two places here. We are no longer dealing with the unit digit. So it's unit digit is, 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 is held being held here. We are no longer dealing with 10 digit. 10 digit is going to be empty. We are dealing with 100 digit. 3 twos are 6. 
3 8 3 is a 24 4 carry 2 8 3 8 3 is a 24 carry 2 2 is going to go up here and 3 5 is a 15 plus 2 is 17 as you can see this is how we do it keep track of what you're carrying throughout the reason i did not cross out this one is because we had nothing on the top here but as soon as that, if I had something, if we had something on the top, we would have crossed out the previous round. Cross out the previous round and put down what you're carrying the second round. When you're dealing with the ten digit, cross out that one. When you're dealing with the third round, and keep track of it on the top. This is it. As you can see, it's quite a lot of work. It's not necessary. This is absolute waste of time in the real exam. This is an absolute sheer waste of time. Is what it is. Zero, five, six. Six plus six is twelve. Twelve plus ten would have been twenty-two. So therefore, twelve plus nine is going to be twenty-one. 1, carry 2, carry 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9. And this is 8. Turns out that the correct answer is, the correct answer is 189,000. Now as you look at the answer choice, and if it turns out that there's only one answer choice that is slightly less than 195,000, which is this one, then you're done. If the other answer choice is too far apart. If it turns out that there is more than one answer choice which are under 195,000, maybe there is 100, one this answer here, 189,000, maybe there is 192,000. If, if that's the situation, then you're going to have to go back and do the refinement. Let's do the quick refinement here to bring our estimates closer to this one. We took, okay, pay a very close attention. We took, this is going to get a little tricky, so pay attention. We took 600, we took 600, 325. How many 325 we take? Uh, we took, we took 600 of them. We were supposed to take only 582. Let's pretend it's 580. Had it been 580, 10 times 10 times 325. Listen very carefully. 10 times 325 is approximately 3,000. It's approximately 3,000. Therefore, 20 times 325 is going to be approximately 6,000. So, if you take away 20, 20, if you take away 20, 325 that would bring us closer to 582. Instead of 600, it would bring us to closer to 582. It's going to be around 580. 580 times 320. So we're going to subtract, we're going to subtract 6,000 from here and see what happens. And that will bring us to 189,000. And this refinement that we just here, this brings us very close to our target. It's almost hitting the bullseye. But this is not necessary. This part that we did here, it happens once in a very, very blue moon where you have to do this much refinement. In most cases, you can do the rough estimate and that is all that is required on this exam. Do you understand? Let's do the next one. Number 8. Number 8 is also a nasty looking one. Again, again, we will not be silly enough to actually sit there and do this out in the real exam. It will be too much. It will be way too much. To sit there and actually multiply 9438 by 165, actually multiplied out manually, one would have to be stir fry crazy. Do you understand? Stir fry crazy is what I said. Let's estimate, shall we? 9000. 438, we're going to pretend it is 10,000. We're going to pretend it is 10,000. Now, can you tell me what is 10,000 times 165? Well, you first, first put down your 165, and since we are multiplying by 10,000, you just count the zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's it, we are done. That's your answer. Our answer is, our answer is, 1,650,000. Thousand, approximately. That's it. We are done. In a matter of seconds. Is that an overestimation or is that an underestimation? Of course, it's an overestimation because we do not have ten thousand of. We don't have ten thousand of them. We only have nine thousand four hundred thirty-eight. Listen very carefully. How many hundred sixty-five? How many hundred sixty-five did we take? We took ten thousand of them. Ten thousand times hundred sixty-five is this amount. It's one hundred sixty-five. Then you put four zero under next to it, and that becomes. 10,165. This amount represents 10,000, 10,165 is equal to 165 and then the 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we end up this amount. 
We don't have 10,000 of them. We only have 9,438. Let's pretend. Let's pretend that it is. Let's pretend that this amount is approximately 9,500. We're going to do some more uh, more refinement. So we can subtract 500, 165. 500, 165. Here we go. 165 times 5. 165 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 carry 2. 6 5 is 30. Plus 2 is 32. 2 carry 3. 1 5, one five is 5. Plus 3 is 8. And now we stick our two zeros. We're multiplying it by 500, not 5. We're taking away. We're going to take away 500, 165. We stick two zeros. And what we end up is... 82,000. Are you still with me in the story? 82,000. I'm not going to waste time but subtracting 82,000 from, from this bloody thing. It is fair enough to say that the answer is going to be something very close to 1,550,000. 1, That's going to be very close to this amount. Let's do it out. Let's see if I know what that is. We're supposed to subtract 82,500 but just subtract 100,000, that's it. I'm going to put down this number on the top so we have room to work with here. So what we're looking for is, what we're looking for is, this amount here is going to be about, about 1,550,000. I'm going to raise this part, we need the room. Let's get going, shall we? such a big fuss about it. Let's get going. We must have clear demarcation in our work so that we don't get confused. This is going to take very long, do you understand? This is very painful. I don't want to do it, I'm not looking forward to it. 8 5 is a 40, 0, carry 4, 3 5 is a 15, 15 plus 4 is 19, 9, carry 1. You see how we do it? Keep track of your work. 4 5 is a 20, plus 1 is 21, 1, carry 2, 9, 5 is a 45, 45 plus 2 is 47. Now we have to multiply it by 6. Hold the unit digit. Don't forget to hold the unit digit. Multiply it by 6. 6, 8 is a 48. 8, carry 4. Even though this is 4, I'm going to cross it out and put a 4. Even though this is, this is also 4, I cross it out and put a 4 to remind myself that that 4 is from the second round. Where did it come from? It came from here. 6, 8 is a, 6, 8 is a 48. This is how we speak. 6, 6, 8 are 48. This is what we are saying. 6 8s are 48. You must know your tables. You must know your tables. 6 8s are 48. 8 carry 4. 6 3s are 18. 18 plus 4 is 22. 2 carry 2. Cross it out and put a 2. 4 6 are 24. 24 plus 2 is 26. 6 carry 2. Cross out this 2 and put a 2. It's very easy to lose track of your of your of your work if you are not concentrating. Nine six are uh, well how much are nine six? Well don't look at me. How the hell do I know? I know what ten six are. Ten six are sixty. There I do know. Ten six are sixty. So nine six must be one uh, six less than sixty. Six less than say, sixty. If you subtract six from sixty it's fifty-four. Fifty-four plus two is fifty-six. Hold the unit digit, hold the uh, ten digit. Multiply it by one. If you multiply it by one, that's very simple. It's just gonna be this amount: eight, three, nine, eight, three, four, nine, eight, three, four, nine. As you can see, all of this was unnecessary. The answer is around 1.5 million, between 1.5 and 1.6 million, 1.5 million, if you like. Four, zero, eight plus eight, eight, eight plus eight is sixteen. Sixteen plus one is gonna be seventeen. Seven, seven, carry one. Eight plus two is ten. Ten plus two is twelve. 2, carry 1, you see I did 8 plus 2 is 10 and then 11 and 12, carry 1, 7 plus 3 is 10 and then 6 and 7, 17, 7, carry 1, again 6 plus 4 is 10 and then we have 5, 5, carry 1, and then 1 plus 9 is 10 plus 5 is 15, voila, turns out that the exact answer is 1 million 557,270. 1 million 557,270. And the claim that we made was is that it was going to be close to 1 million 550,000. 1 million 550,000 is damn close to 
1,557,000, you see? You will have no trouble at all locating the right answer doing this estimation. You may not even have to go as far as this. You could have just stopped here. There aren't going to be too many answer choices under 1.6 million. Do you understand? If it turns out that there is more than one, then you do the second refinement, the polishing that is. Let's do number nine, the penultimate one. Number nine, I need the break. I need a break, not the break. There you go. The number nine. The penultimate one. What does penultimate mean? Penultimate we learned in our vocabulary word, our vocabulary lessons long time ago. It's just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. Penultimate simply means second to the last. We learned it on day 11. Vocabulary day 11. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you wouldn't be, type in vocabulary words day 11, watch the video and learn the word penultimate and you will learn some other words. Number 9. In number 9 we have 29 students. We have 29 students and we are told that each has 30 unique questions, unique questions. In other words, the students do not have the same questions, the questions are not repeated, everybody has a unique questions, everybody has a set of 30 questions. The question simply is how many questions do we have, how many questions does the, does the teacher have to make up in order to make this exam where she's going to have 30 questions on the exam and she has 29 students. Well, it's very simple, let's multiply 29 by 3, that's all. I will stick the zero at the end, at the very end. Nine threes are twenty-seven. Seven carry two. Three three twos are six plus two is eight. And now you take care of your zero. We don't have three questions. We don't have we don't have three questions. We have thirty questions per per exam. Put a zero and put a zero. There is your answer. Eight hundred and seventy. Eight hundred and seventy. Now, if you ask me, actually, twenty-nine times thirty. If you ask me, in all honesty, this was a damn silly thing to do. Actually, here's a quicker way. Here's a quicker way. They're looking for 29 times 30, just do 30 times 30. 30 times 30 is very easy. 30 times 30 is simply 3 times 3, which is 9, and then just stick two zeros. Here's a zero, and here's a zero. Stick two zeros, and that's 30 times 30. But we're not doing, we're not supposed to do 30 times 30, we're supposed to do 29 times 30. We have 29 30s, not 30 30s. We do not have 30 30s, we have 29 30s. We just subtract 130 from it. Subtract 1. 30 from it, not 130. One of the 30s from it, and you will end up in 870. Let's do the very last one. Very last question, number 10. In number 10, we have 12 words. We have 12 words. And we have 15 workers, 15 workers, I should know how to spell workers, per ward. Question is, how many workers do we have? Oh, very simple, just multiply 12 by 15. And we're not going to do, we're not going to multiply it like a baby, we're not going to multiply it by 5 and the 1, we're just going to multiply it by 15. Okay, let's get going, it's very simple. Okay, watch, watch what happens. 15, 15 times 2 is 30. That's a zero, carry three, and then fifteen. We're multiplying by fifteen, not not by five and the one. We're just going to do it in one step. Fifteen times two is thirty. Zero, carry three, and fifteen times one is fifteen plus three is eight. Eighteen. One eighty. Is your is your answer? That's it. I will see you tomorrow on day number seven, where we're going to start division problems, and division problems can be tricky if you do them in a longhand version. There is no reason for you to have to do division the longhand, the long version. We'll learn how to do the division quickly and efficiently without having to do the long version. And if you're interested in learning this quick, this method that I'm alluding to, that I'm talking about, they're all there in the basic math series. Watch up to 100, you don't have to go all the way up to 200, up to 100, you will find problems which deal with division. They're clearly labeled division problems, division quiz, do those questions do those division problems and division, division quizzes 
and you will get the hang of it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.